housemates to the finale with you. Who would it be and why? I'll, I'll take Kosi. So why did you nominate her? Literally, I was out of options. Uh, the third free option will be Yvonne, but I had this bond with Yvonne. If, as you say, you didn't nominate Yvonne because you have a bond with her, why? Didn't you mention her name when the question about the finale was asked? <laughs> Okay, you might want to grab a cup of tea for this particular tea I'm about to spill because ladies and gentlemen, I don't think I have actually fully recovered from Ibubu's diary session today. Yeah, Ibubu's diary session kind of shocked a lot of people. I mean, a lot of us did not think that Ibubu had it in him to be that manipulated. You know, the spotlight has always been on the likes of um, Kosi, the likes of Miracle, the likes of um, Tati, the likes of Tabang. I mean, ladies and gentlemen, when you try to create a list of the most manipulative housemates in this season of People That Titans, you would hardly, you know, insert Ibubu's name on that list. But today, <laughs> during this young man's diary session, oh my God, even Big Brother, was forced to bombard him with very, very pertinent questions, you know, to make him talk. And as he was talking, in fact, the more he was talking, the more he kept on exposing himself and his game and that, you know, that pity card game that he has been playing all season, which has actually landed him in the final. So brace yourselves. We're going to get into this conversation. It's quite important that we get into this conversation. We're going to talk more about it um, tomorrow by 7 p.m. WAT during our YouTube live stream. So please make sure you come through. I'm just going to give you guys the highlight of the details of the conversations, all right? And then tomorrow we will talk and discuss it extensively, all right? But in the meantime, that's what we're going to be doing on this particular video. And um, aside that, there was also Coffee with Kosi featuring Tabang. There was a lot that was shared during that, you know, show, Kosi show. And um, it kind of gave a lot of insight to what Kosi and Tabang each have in their mind towards each other. All right. And then there was also certain things that Ipeleng said during a diary session that raised a lot of questions for me. So we're going to get into this video. I will spill the tea as usual, and I would encourage you all to please go ahead and share with me your thoughts in the comment section below. And um, yeah, you're all especially welcome back to my YouTube channel. My name is Gloria Elijah. This is Frankly Speaking with Glory, and I am the girl with the tea. If you are new here and you are yet to officially become a part of this community, it's quite easy. Please go ahead and do exactly what you see on your screen. All right. And um, that's it. Let's quickly proceed into the details of this video. So our three finalists had had their diary session today. And um, of all the many things that Biggie had discussed with them in the diary room, there was a particular question that Big Brother had asked that had kind of revealed certain aspects of these individuals that a lot of us did not really think existed with them. Yes, because of the way they had actually played their game all season. I mean, this is the 10th week and everybody seems to be on the low, low, especially the finalists now. They seem to be very, very chilled and relaxed because they know that they have secured their spots in the finals. So it's more like and we don't have to do too much anymore other than Ibubu, of course, because Ibubu is actually working harder than the devil to ensure that he eliminates all his strongest contenders, you know, from the finals in order for him to stand the chance to emerge the winner of the season, which is not really a bad idea. If you ask me, because at the end of the day, it is a game, right? There needs to be a victor at the end of the day. Anyways, first, starting with Ipe Leng's diary session, um, that one question Big Brother had asked her was, um, that if she had the power to take one of the nominated housemates to the finals, who would that housemate be and why? She had first mentioned Kanaga's name. And then on the second thought, she had dropped Kanaga's name and then mentioned Black Boy. Initially, she thought that she could pick two. Then maybe I told her, no, just one. So she had dropped Kanaga's name and had gone for Black Boy's name simply because of how she felt that she had betrayed him. Yeah. And because they were partners all through the season and she feels like he deserves it. Now, at the point Ipe Leng had mentioned Kanaga's name, I was kind of confused because I was here asking myself that, was this not the same Kanaga that Ipe Leng had complained about being a competition to her 
So where is this coming from now that she says she would love to take him to the finals? I mean, I don't get it. And it's not like she doesn't know that Kenaga is a strong contender to her. She knows, but then she just said what she said. Now, thankfully, Big Brother did not allow it slide. Big Brother had gone ahead to ask her or even remind her that the last time we spoke, you had actually complained of Kenaga being a competition to you. So where is this coming from now that you want to take him to the finals? I'm only paraphrasing what Big Brother had asked. And Ikelenga had given a very, very strange answer. To summarize her answer, for her, she at this point in the game, she's no longer about the $100,000. For her, anything that wants to happen at the end of the day should go ahead and happen. For her, now she's more interested in valuing the bonds that she has created in the house. For her, she has created a bond with Kanaga and she would love to, you know, continue with that bond even after the show. Guys, <laughs> God. I mean, I know that there's been this sort of friendship between Tati and Kanaga and Ipeleng in the house, you know, since the show started. Um, Ipeleng had had this um, sort of rapport with Kanaga and it's because of Tati who is a friend. But then I've been watching this housemates all week, even last week, and I'm trying to search my brain for where this bond is coming from. Yes. You and I know that for the past four weeks, or should I say three weeks, yes, before Miracle got evicted on Sunday, it's been Ikeleng and Miracle. Ikeleng and Miracle and sometimes Tati. So when Ikeleng gave that response, ladies and gentlemen it just reeked of shadiness to me yeah but she might have a point and even big brother's response to her it kind of sounded sarcastic in my ears because big brother was like oh don't worry um being a titan means different things to different people it might be winning the one hundred thousand dollars it might be winning relationships or friendships so for you don't be ashamed of winning friendship i say okay well, <laughs> different strokes for different folks but i would love to know what you all think i mean this is not me undervaluing you know the importance of friendships and connections on a platform like big brother anybody could end up being your savior on the outside and you and i can attest to the fact that it is not everybody that emerges the winner of a show like big brother right that ends up becoming the most successful housemate of their season we know so i mean ikalang is kind of smart for wanting to build bonds and connections with um Canada jr but the way she gave that response ladies and gentlemen i just felt like she was kind of lying because i did not see where that bond was coming from in the earlier weeks yes but in the past four weeks hell no hell no now moving on to ibubu's diary session biggie had thrown the same question to ibubu and ibubu's response was cozy yeah that if he had the power to take a nominated housemate to the finals he would take cozy to the finals and guys just as i was confused with equivalent response I was also confused with Ibubu's choice for a response. And I was racking my brains that, bro, you nominated Kosi yesterday. Abi, yeah, yesterday. You nominated Kosi. And when they asked for your reason, you nominated Kosi and Tabang, you said it was intuition. Your intuition told you to, to, to go ahead and nominate Kosi. Ah, ah. So what the hell are you talking about? And I see Big Brother was reading my mind. Big Brother had asked him why. And his response was that, oh, there's this energy that Kosi has. She's always happy. Um, you know, it's like she's not bothered at all about the nominations or even the evictions. And then she gets saved, blah, blah, blah. And it feels kind of bad that she's been up a number of times, you know, for nomination. So it would have loved for her to rest, you know, blah, blah, blah. I'm like, bro, you're contradicting yourself. If that was, your, that was on your mind, if that was at the top of your mind, then you shouldn't have nominated her yesterday. So why are you saying otherwise right now? And then another reason he gave was that um, oh, Big Brother knows how he does his nominations, that he does not like repeating his nominations. He felt like um, he had not nominated Kosi and Tabang before, so he had to nominate them. And then he was short of options. Oh, he could not nominate, um, what's her name now, Yvonne. He could not nominate Ipeleng. And I'm like, bro, your brain is keeping at this point because you should know that Ipeleng is untouchable till the show ends. I mean, guys, it was just talking, 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 saying a lot of things. Now, people that allowed him to finish his blabbing, the people that now asked him that, okay, you say that Yvonne is your friend. So when I asked you the question of which nominated housemate you would love to take to the finals, why didn't you mention Yvonne's name? 
once again, it would be started skipping like a broken record. He could not even give a valid reason. He was just going on and on about, oh, that, ah, that's, there's this thing about Yvonne. He knows that Yvonne will get to the finals. He knows that Yvonne will be there. You know, he's not bothered. Da, da, da. Guys, it was just yanning dust. But in the midst of all of his yanning, I was just looking at this guy in amazement, in wonderment that, oh my God, this guy is freaking manipulative. This guy has ended up playing all the people that have been pitying him and giving him votes. Am I mad at it? Hell no. I'm not mad. <laughs> As a matter of fact, I am impressed. Because, hey, I mean, let's call a spade a spade. A lot of people have been cutting a bubble slack. You know, some slacks. Partly because he's highly intelligent, very, very hardworking when it comes to, you know, going for tasks and giving his all. But also because he's got albinism. So the color of his skin, his uniqueness makes him stand out, you know, kind of draws some sort of sympathy, you know, from people. People just want to see him go far in the game. And now a lot of people also want him to win as well. Am I mad at it? Hell no, I'm not mad at it. It's the game. The game requires every housemate to bring their best foot forward. In my frank opinion, Ibubu has been able to weaponize his uniqueness. I don't call it a condition, no, because Ebubu is not an invalid. Ebubu is not sick. Ebubu is not, Ebubu does not have an ailment. He does not have a problem. No, Ebubu is a normal human being, just as you and I and every other person that does not have albinism. But in my frank opinion, I feel like Ebubu has been able to weaponize it. Yes, to the best of his abilities, he has weaponized it so greatly that it has taken him this far, not just with us, the viewers, but also his fellow housemates. Yes. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, in case you, you've forgotten, these housemates have sort of been scared to nominate the royals. Why? Because they don't want to be seen as that person that does not want Ebubu's likes to thrive on the show. I mean, listen to Ipelang's reasons as well, you know, for using her supreme veto power to give him a slot in the finals. So watching Ibubu's diary session today, wow, it kind of shook me because this guy was trying to play, far, um, um, play smart with Big Brother. But if he enters this hole, Big Brother will pull him out. If he enters that hole, Big Brother will drag him out. Ibubu had nowhere to hide. In other words, Ibubu's manipulation was completely exposed today during his diary session. And I give it to him, a game well played. But now let's wait, keep our fingers crossed and see if all of his manipulations will work. Because before Big Brother even asked him that first question, there was a question of oh, what he thought about the eviction of Sunday. And this guy was saying a lot of things about, oh, he feels so guilty that he had nominated Miracle and Blue Ava and now they are gone, that he was having sleepless nights. He could not sleep at night. He was feeling very worried. He was feeling very bothered. And I'm like, bro, why are you pretending? Why are you acting like you feel bad? Bro, you don't feel bad. You don't. Because, hey, guess what? After the nominations of last week, right was it after last week nominations and people had asked him why he had nominated the people he nominated his reason for nominating miracle was that miracle is always in your face you know that miracle makes him feel uncomfortable in the house another kind of thing and the way he had given his reasons he had said it as though miracle irritates him in the house so him coming to the diary room today to come and talk about how he was having sleepless nights over miracle and blue ava's eviction and how he was feeling guilty. I said, bro, you don't even have a conscience. So cut that crap. Cut that crap. Yes. I mean, guys, I could just see through all of that. I could see through all of it. And Big Brother could also see through it as well. So <laughs> in case you think Ebubu is the only saint in that house, hell no. Ebubu is also one of the biggest manipulators this season. Now quickly, moving on to Coffee with Kosi featuring Tabang. I'm going to be frank with all of you. Ever since Kosi started this Her Coffee with Kosi show, um, I've not really paid 100% attention to it. And that is because most of the stories that these housemates that she has interviewed have shared, I have actually already heard from the house, maybe in one conversation or the other, that they have had with their friends or close circles. Um, but for today's Coffee with Kosi, 
I was really interested because something told me that Kosi was not going to stick to our regular interview questions. Yes. Why? Because Tabang was going to be our guest. So something was telling me that these people were going to make that conversation dramatic and dramatic they did. Aside the fact that Kosi had, you know, asked questions about Tabang's background, his upbringing, his childhood, his parents, where he's coming from. The conversation took a dramatic turn into getting to know more about how Tabang feels towards Nelisa. I mean, guys, the next questions Kosi started asking completely revolved around Nelisa. Kosi wanted to know how Tabang felt about Nelisa. She wanted to know about if he still felt something for her, you know, while still playing around in the house with her. That's Kosi. She wanted to know if Tabang was going to go back to Nelisa after the show. She wanted to know if Tabang was even considering it. She wanted to know what would be the future for she and Tabang after the show. All of these questions she was asking at the guise of trying to know if Tabang has healed completely of what had happened between herself and um, himself and Nelisa. And ladies and gentlemen, I must give it to Tabang. <laughs> Tabang is the smartest 21 year old I've ever listened to speak in my entire life. This young man is so smart. When Tabang was answering Kosi's questions, oh my God, it just seemed as though Tabang already got media training and I was really impressed. Now here's the gag. The gag is Tabang was not telling Kosi what sh she wanted to hear. Because he was asking questions like, oh, do you still feel something for her? Oh, after the show, what's going to happen? And Tabang was answering very, very carefully. Yes. But one of those responses that Tabang gave that really triggered me, like I literally almost fell off my sofa, was when Kosi had asked him what was going to happen outside the house. If he was going to, you know, go back to Nalisa, knowing fully well, you know, that what she had done with Mel and all those things, blah, blah, blah. And Tabang had said that actually... What he plans to do after the show is to start relating with people on a clean slate on the outside. That he doesn't care what must have happened or transpired inside the house with anybody. That on the outside, he's starting afresh. He's starting all over. That response triggered Kosi immediately. Kosi was like, you mean everybody? And Tabang was like, yes. And she was like, everybody? Meaning, you mean including me? Including the fact that you and I have been kissing and doing stuff in the house? You mean including me? And Taban looked at her and said, yes, actually, yes. <laughs> if Kosi was trying to get back at Taban, you know, on his evasive responses to her questions, um, she had actually told him that, oh, that the, what they have right now actually only started off as a very, very clean friendship you know they were just having fun and she felt like tabang loved being in a company and that was why she reciprocated the energy and tabang looked at her and said no that was not the case and she was like okay so what was the case and tabang said well you came off as though you were really enjoying my company you always want to be around me hence the reason i reciprocated the energy and both of them were looking at each other like they wanted to pounce on each other because guys these two people were firing shots at each other. It was wild. But sadly, the cameras kept on disappearing off their scene. They did not allow us to hear all they were saying. Big brother, you were so annoying. I'm going to be frank with you all. But after the whole interview, after the whole Coffee with Kosi show, it became kind of awkward between both of them. Yeah, both of them kind of separated for a bit. Kosi was sleeping on the other side of the lounge. Tabang was sleeping on the other side of the lounge. It felt as though... There were certain things that were said that was kind of offensive to both of them or maybe to Kosi. I don't know, guys. And the cameras refused to show us. But then much later, Kosi went to Tabang claiming that the weather was cold. I said, Kosi, I know you. You've probably re-strategized and told yourself, nah, you need to go back to your game. Because aside from Tabang, there's no other person in the house that you would have used to play your game. So right now, they are back together like nothing ever happened. But hey, ladies and gentlemen... What are your thoughts about all of these things I have brought up on this video? Please go ahead and share the comment section below. And I'll see you guys on another video. Have an amazing day. Bye.